All right, let's look at these next two examples with uh, evaluating a limit with these graphs. So as x approaches negative 1, the y value, it looks like it's approaching, is also negative 1. And over here on the right side, as x approaches negative 1, it's approaching something different. It's approaching positive 1. So we did not get the same value. So when that happens, if they're different, just like it was for a table, the limit does not exist. <clears throat> for part G, the same thing is happening. Uh, as X approaches zero, if you trace in over on the left side, looks like you're approaching negative two. And from the right side, as you approach X equals zero, the y value it looks like you're going to run into is positive 2. Those are different values, so the limit does not exist. And for all you Lindsay Lohan fans out there, you probably got a little excited about that. Uh, I taught high school for several years, and so when the, mean, the movie Mean Girls came out, they were very excited about when, you know, when the limit does not exist, because she proclaims that in some math competition. You can check it out if you want. It's actually kind of funny. Okay, so let's look at cases of uh, when the limit does not exist. So I've seen one of them is when you have differing values. So they don't approach the same value or same number. The second type is when it's unbounded. So like if we took the limit as x approaches zero of one over x squared, that does not exist either because the function increases without bound. It just keeps shooting up and up and up. Um, so it does not approach a real value or a real number. <clears throat> we'll see in a later section how we treat this, uh, but for now it's really gonna be a DNE because we don't know how to really deal with it. And the third type is when it oscillates really, really fast. So like sine of one over x, as x approaches zero, it's also not existing because it doesn't approach a single value. So this curve, as you get closer and closer to x equals zero, it starts bouncing really, really fast. And it's so fast, that's why it's got like kind of like this solid band right in here because it's really just boom, 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 boom. It's so close together. It's like an it's like an accordion getting like squished in. But it's the y values themselves are, are alternating between negative one and one. It can't de really decide what it's approaching. It's approaching like two different things. Well, limits can't do that. They have to approach a single value. <clears throat> okay, so looking at graphs, these are your three cases of not existing. All right, now let's get into the fun math stuff. You're like, wait, weren't we doing math? Well, yes, we were, but um, when you get into calculus, one thing that is a little bit different than other math classes is there's gonna be a bit more formality involved. So looking at theorems, looking at definitions and applying them um, more so than what you did in like pre-calculus or like algebra two. Um, <clears throat> so here we go. <laughs> okay, so this is the formal definition of a limit. So let f be a function defined on an open interval containing c, uh, except possibly at c, and let l be a real number. So the statement, the limit of f of x as x approaches c equals l, so when you see this, that means for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta, that's a lowercase delta, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that if the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. 
So that is the formal definition of a limit. So the definition, it doesn't give you a way to figure out what this limit actually is. It's not a way to find L. Instead, it allows you to prove that a suspected limit is correct. Okay, so I'm going to stop the video here um, so it doesn't get too lengthy, and then we'll pick it up and hopefully finish it uh, in the next one.